this year's conference will shine a light on new patient experiences, the future of telemedicine in the domestic market. But I think importantly, the innovation ecosystem needed to drive commercialisation and create jobs. Today's theme of rethinking and resetting the health system is an interesting one. Um, resetting implies a stability that I'm not sure that we're going to be living with into the future. And um, I think a resetting is more about recalibrating to be nimble and adaptive and really assessing how we change and adapt in our relationship to the community in the delivery of a broad suite of government services, uh, but particularly health, because it is such a personal relationship. I believe the pandemic's finished and we're back to normal. We can just go back to business as normal. We are never going to go back to business as normal. <laughs> We have COVID, we have to learn to live with COVID, we have long COVID, we have the tsunami of chronic disease that was coming before COVID, and we also have delayed care. And that's to name a few. Name an environment that health will have to find itself in. It's, it's risen to some of the challenges to date, but there are more and more significant challenges to follow. Where do we think we are in terms of digital health literacy? Now, if you think about the regular medical intern coming out or the nursing grad coming out from unis and then going straight into a hospital, let's say locally in a local context, PCH or Phoenix Standing Hospital, all they get at times is just a couple of hours of mandatory training in, in, in digital systems. And but is that enough? Semantics is important. Um, being able to talk to one another in the same language, getting machines to be able to talk to one another in the same language, having an EMR that can talk to our PAC system and we can exchange data. But I think the most important thing around education is probably around the Privacy Act. I think one of the problems we found was that in the past, it had just been tech companies coming in and talking to other tech people and clinicians never had a say. And the key to any sort of, uh, anything you're going to do is to engage clinicians and to have the right, uh, have the user experience in it. And when I look at some of the systems here, you can see the user experience is not built into them in any way. It's not about Microsoft, it's not about pricing, it's not about technology. What I have learned over the five years is that is the people behind the scene who are making the difference. Uh, the Royal Society of Blind or Civic Disability in New South Wales or NDS, uh, none of this organisation came at home. This partnership would have worked or this uh, uh, project would have been successful or we won an award or case studies if the people behind the scene didn't collaborate, didn't work together or they didn't come together or they didn't have a right values or purpose behind that why they're going into this journey. It was about people coming together for the right reason to do the right thing. And, and that's what we have learned over the years that being a Microsoft partner is not about technology, it's about human spirit. As long as we keep that human spirit on the center of it, we are uh, doing good job and we are making a difference out there.